Hi everyone, today I am continuing the gua sha study series with the subject of grass. This is something that I really love to paint and it's something I get a lot of comments on about how detailed and realistic I can paint grass. So today I'm going to show you two different ways that I approach this subject. I'm using my Edger sketchbook and my Himi gouache and I'm just starting with a really light sketch. Before we start painting, I'd like to say a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives that offers thousands of inspiring classes on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, and so much more. I honestly love learning on Skillshare and whenever I'm looking to learn a new skill or dive into a new topic, it's where I go to first. A class that I found really helpful and informative on the topic of color mixing is called Color Collector. Explore the art of color mixing with gouache by Marie Noel. Color mixing is a bit of a mystery to a lot of beginner painters and this class really helps to break down the basics of understanding color mixing. She goes over things like cools, warms, tints, shades, mixing grays, complementaries and there are lots of exercises with color wheels and charts to help you become more familiar with color and mixing. So if you're feeling lost with learning about color theory, I highly recommend this class as I really enjoyed it. Skillshare is also curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. I also just published my first Skillshare class, A Beginner's Guide to Gouache. So if you're interested in checking out that class or if you're interested in trying any of the other classes on Skillshare, the first 1000 people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of premium membership. This first study is actually just a crop version of a painting that I did a little while ago and when I first posted it to Instagram I got a lot of comments on the grass and how it looked like it was swaying in the wind. So that was actually what gave me the idea of actually wanting to show you how I paint it as a lot of people ask for a tutorial on this. So here I'm just painting in some of the background details and then after that I go and block in the base color for the grass. This is something that I do Almost every time I'm painting grass, I mix a, a really dark green. Usually I just use black mixed with green or you can mix green using blue and yellow and I just block that in. To paint the grass, if you're using a round brush, you want to use one that comes to a really pointy tip so that you can paint really thin strokes. Or you could also use a liner brush or a rigger brush. These brushes are great because they can hold a lot of water and paint so I can get a lot of strokes out of them. Now to paint the grass, I just mix a dark green. I usually start with a darker color that's a little bit lighter than the background and then I will build it up to be lighter and lighter as I highlight more of the grass. So first I'm starting with a shade that's just a little bit lighter than the background and I used my liner brush for most of the grass actually because I find it most comfortable to be able to paint really quickly and to get a lot of thin strokes really quickly. There's not too much of a trick to this, it's actually just a lot of patience in building up a lot of strokes to make it look realistic, like there's a lot of grass clustered together. It's just many, many singular strokes and I just do them really quickly. I find the easiest and most natural way to do it is to use my wrist to just flick the brush across the paper and I go from bottom to top. So I end with the top of the grass blade and that way I get more of a, a natural grass blade that is a bit thinner at the top. With the consistency of the paint, you want to make sure it's quite smooth so that it will flow off your brush nicely so you can build up the strokes really quickly. With the Himi Gouache, I did find that it was a little bit hard to achieve the perfect consistency because as I've noticed from the very first time I used it, the gouache is a bit thicker than the other gouache I used. Usually it's not an issue because I just remember to adjust for it and I just add in a bit more water. But this time it was a little bit trickier because I couldn't get the paint to flow off nicely. It would either be a bit too thick and streaky or I would add too much water that it would just be way too runny and it wouldn't allow me to paint thin strokes. So I had a bit of a difficult time trying to get the right consistency with the Himi gouache. So if you're experiencing some difficulty with it, just know that the gouache can make a difference as well and the consistency of the paint can either make it easier or harder for you to 
paint these really thin delicate strokes so even though it might look effortless on camera here and obviously because I've sped up the footage it looks like I'm painting really quickly but it actually took me about 45 minutes to paint this so it really just takes some time and patience so that you can paint in each individual blade of grass so it looks really realistic and detailed so now I'm just adding some highlights towards the tip of the grass and some in the foreground as well and for the highlights I just mix in more white. I also used a bit of yellow ochre and I mixed in a bit more red so that some grass strands are a little bit more yellow so it's not just all one shade of green. For the second painting I'm going to be painting some beach grass, I think that's what it's called, it's just grass that grows at the beach. I also like how this grass is really tall, so again I'm using the really thin liner brush to paint in those strands. And now I'm just quickly painting in the background again, just blocking in some of the details. I try not to get too lost in those details since we are just focusing on painting on grass today. And I start by just blocking in the base shape of where the grass goes. So I'm using a really dark green and just quickly blocking in those shapes. And then what I do is I go in with my liner brush and I start to actually build out the shape of the grass so I'm still using that same dark green paint and I'm just layering in that base layer and then as the grass gets lighter towards the top I just mix in more white and more yellow to my paint and I start to highlight it and I just build that up in layers as well so it goes from darker to lighter and lighter until you get the very bright highlights at the top to mix some really natural looking greens, I really like to mix black and yellow for an olive green because black has a blue undertone so when you mix black and yellow you get green. Otherwise you can also mix blue and yellow and depending on the kind of blue and yellow you use you might get a really vibrant green. If the green is too vibrant it might look a little bit unnatural since if you take a look at the grass that we're painting it's more of a a natural muted kind of green it's nothing very vibrant so to tone it down I like to mix in some red since that's the opposite color of green so if you mix in some red with your yellow and blue you'll get more of an olive green a bit more of a muted green so it just looks a bit more natural I also like to use yellow ochre for some of the more yellow looking grass and I also use yellow ochre to mix green with blue For the next two studies I am painting grass that is a lot shorter and for this I'm actually using a different technique. It's something that I'm still experimenting with. I've only done it a few times but the result turned out really nicely so I thought I'd share how I paint really short strands of grass really quickly. So first I'm just again blocking in the base and to do that what I do is I look at the reference photo and I look past the blades of grass and I try to pick out what the background color is but usually it's just the same dark green color. So to paint 
short blades of grass really quickly without having to paint each individual strand. I have been using a calligraphy brush and what I can do with the calligraphy brush is I can pinch the bristles with my fingers and then the bristles will spread out so that it will create a fan brush in a sense. So you could also just um, use a fan brush for this if you don't have a calligraphy brush like this. I actually don't really use these brushes. I bought them many years ago but I brought them out again just to experiment with this technique and they work really well. So then what I do is I just pick up some paint with it and it gives me this really natural shape and I can quickly paint on large patches of short blades of grass without having to paint them individually. And I think you can have a lot of fun with this brush because you can paint so much quicker. It just feels a lot more fun and a bit less tedious to do. And again, I'm just building it up in layers. I start with a darker color and then I build it up to be lighter and lighter until I start to highlight some areas. And when I'm painting this, I'm also following the shape of the, the grass. So it's kind of curving around so I'll tilt my brush in different directions so I can follow follow the curve of the grass and for the blades of grass that are in the foreground I switch back to my liner brush just so I can paint some thinner lines because when the grass is further away it's a lot shorter so the details aren't as noticeable so it's good to use that calligraphy brush to just quickly paint in some lines but as the grass moves closer it gets longer and it's more detailed each individual strand so I went in with my liner brush and then I went back to my calligraphy brush just so I could tie the two together so it wasn't so obvious that I was using a different brush for the foreground. For the last study, I'm just painting a flat patch of short grass, which is another great chance to use a calligraphy brush or a fan brush so you can quickly block it in and for it to still look very detailed. With the base layer, I'm painting it a little bit lighter towards the top and a little bit darker towards the bottom since the shadows and the spacing between the grass in the foreground is, is bigger and more obvious whereas as it recedes into the distance, you don't see the shadows between the blades of grass as much because they're all sort of together since they're so far away. And again with the brush I'm just using my fingers to pinch the hair so that they'll spread out and I pick up some paint and I can just quickly fill in this whole patch of grass. I make sure that the grass at the front is longer and the grass at the back is a lot shorter so I'm still creating that perspective so it looks like there's some depth in this field. I think that's about all I have to say about how I approach painting grass. I'm sure there's many other techniques you could try. These are just two that I really enjoy for painting really realistic looking grass. If you have a go at recreating these or practicing painting grass, feel free to tag me on Instagram because I love seeing your recreations. And if you are interested in checking out my Skillshare class, A Beginner's Guide to Gouache, I'll have a link for that down below. And if you do get to try it, I'd love to hear any feedback on it. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.